Happy Monday, y'all, and welcome back to another Goku Runner Talks podcast. In this episode, we have Elizabeth Bowman. She's a Houston Marathon ambassador, former swimmer, cyclist, attempting to run a race in all 50 states, and we'll find out all about her in this episode. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Goku Runner Talks podcast, and today we have Elizabeth Bowman. She is part of the Houston Marathon Ambassador Team, just like me. So, Elizabeth, how are you doing? Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. So, I want to know your running story. And, you know, everybody, everybody has a running story, how they started, uh, what did they do before, were they always a runner? What's your running story? So, I was not a runner before at all. Um, I was a swimmer when I was a kid, like in high school, junior high, all of that. Um, and then nothing in college, nothing at all. Um, I didn't really do any sort of fitness for a while. Um, and then let me think, I kind of went through a fitness journey with my husband when we first met, um, I started lifting weights, kind of doing some cardio, but nothing too serious. Um, then we had kids and I kind of was like, I need to get a little healthier. And basically in 2020, along with the rest of the world, not really related, but it's just when I was done having kids, I started um, cycling. So I started using the Peloton app and I had a cheap spin bike and I did that and I did weightlifting um, and I kind of fell in love with it, bought the actual bike, still just cycling, um, joined a gym and met some people who are now in my run club who invited me to run with them. And I was like, absolutely not. I don't run. <laughs> um, like I started doing a few walk run type things on Peloton and I was like, uh, okay, it's not terrible. Um, and one of my friends, she signed up for, she was turning 45 and she signed up for the Houston half and she was like, you should do this with me. And I'm like, I don't run. Why would I do this with you? And she's like, well, it's yeah. my last one. I'm retiring. It's I'm not doing this past 45. So you're going to do this with me. And I'm like, uh, absolutely not. And it just kind of started eating in the back of my head. I was like, could I do this? Could I do this? I don't know. And basically I signed up for a 5k in October, um, just kind of out of, well, let me see if I can run for three miles. Um, what year was that? October what? That was, I signed up for it in October of 22. Okay. Um, and I had just lost, oh yeah. So another fun fact, I just lost 130 pounds, wow. um, from 2020 until October 22 ish. So like that whole journey was part of, all of this um but I ran that 5k and actually got fourth in my age group and I was oh, like wow. man by like two seconds <laughs> you're in the bubble and I was <laughs> that's, like, man, that's I could have ran two, two seconds. seconds faster you know so then I got a little hungry and then I was like okay I'm doing this half and I finally signed up did all the training um and I did my first half in January loved Which one it was that? in Houston the oh, Houston, okay. okay. so I did that I loved it um I injured my IT band about three or four weeks before the race. So that was a little challenging, but I loved it. Um, and then I ended up doing my first full the following August. So I pretty much started running August of 22 and ran my first mile and then did my first full August of 23. So I went from mile to wow. marathon in a year. Um, yeah. So I go all in on things when I start doing them, it turns out. So <laughs> So you were a weightlifter. Were you like anti- uh cardio you know i know most people in the gym are like i don't, i'm not doing cardio i'm just gonna no. well, you, wait, but you were you were you're were, you were cycling you're swimming too yeah huh? i did cycling and i did like some hit work and i did you know like stuff like that or i did like walking on an incline i did that a lot on mm -hmm. leg days and things but i never really i just never had any interest in running because it was really hard um i was really yeah. out of shape and it was really <laughs> hard so i was like oh i don't i don't see any reason to do that um but yeah, now we're of, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you now you're here and you're 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 hooked. I, I saw your Instagram. You're going on all these uh, runcations with your buddies and all that. Yes. And, uh, so how many races have you done? Have uh, have you done so far? <sighs> and is your friend still running? I know she said she's retiring. After no, her. she's not. She really didn't. Like, she really did quit. Like huh. that was wow. literally it for her. She. I mean, she's done with distance running. She runs, like she has a mm -hmm. treadmill and she runs, but she's done with racing and distance running and all the things, so. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. I feel like a lot of runners say that. They're like, oh, this is my last marathon. I'm never going to do one again. Too, but she, she really was done. <laughs> she was serious. She, I think she'd been doing it for 10 years and that was her goal and she was just done, so. 
Okay, I have a buddy who did the uh, the Boston. He's like, once I do Boston, I, I'm I'm done with marathons, and I think he signed up for like three or four since then. So you know, yeah, I, call I all said runners. I wasn't gonna do another one after my first one, and then I did Chevron the following January. So I did like two back to back marathon training cycles, which was a lot. Um. So your, your training <laughs> cycle, do you do the whole thing pretty religiously, or are you, are you good about that? I'm not. Um, I'm not. I I would say I was. I think that this season has been a little more um unplanned at just trying to get out there consistently and show up so i'm like okay i'm gonna at least run three miles today if i don't have time to do any more than that then that's what it is um i mean i have a full-time job i have three kids my kids play sports like i <laughs> i stay very busy um so yeah. i'm fitting it into nooks and crannies of time so sometimes like yesterday i had four miles scheduled and i only ran three because I had to make dinner. So, I mean, so you are know. you doing most of those miles on? I saw you had a treadmill. I saw you did have the Peloton. So, are you doing mostly yes. on your treadmill at, at home? Um, I do some outside and I also go to run club like two or three days a week. So, I, I try to kind of mix it up. Um, but if I need to, yeah, I'll do it on the treadmill because I mean, I can take work calls on the treadmill, mm -hmm. be on mute, and do, you know, some miles. So, that's been, I think, the easiest thing for me is to find nooks and crannies of time, but I definitely, I'm like a one to two days on the treadmill, one, you know, and three days outside, something like that. I run five days a week. So. Oh, wow. So that's a, that's pretty good. That's really good, actually. I, I'm finally getting a treadmill. Somebody said, get, I'm going to get one, uh, I think next week or this week. I don't know what, when they're shipping it out, but uh, I'm finally getting one. I, I just find it hard to run on the treadmill. I feel like my pace is slower and my effort is more on the treadmill. See, and I, I feel the complete opposite. Like really? when it's really hot in the summer, I run a lot yeah. on the treadmill, especially like if I need easy miles, I can't get easy miles outside. It's too hot. Yeah. So yeah, my yeah. heart rate, I can't, I can't keep them in zone two. So like I end up on the treadmill. Um, I am, I would say I'm, people would probably say I'm pretty regimented. I feel like this year I'm a little less than I was, but I can tell you I have my whole schedule written out. I look at it every Sunday. It's like, okay, these are the things you're doing each day. I, Love, upload every workout onto my Garmin like every month at the beginning of the month I program them all in there so I guess I'm relatively regimented <laughs> so you're a Houston Marathon ambassador just like me you're 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 a first timer right are you, yes are you, right yes. so yeah you're one of the freshmen class so how did you join uh the the Houston Marathon ambassador club well, I, I actually applied for it last year. Um, and mm -hmm. then I was like, well, I'm going to try again this year because I love this event. The energy um, mm -hmm. is amazing. So that's kind of what keeps me coming back every year. Um, last yeah. year, my headphones on the marathon died at mile 20. <laughs> um, oh, that's a tough part that too. To me, yeah, that happened to me <laughs> on my first marathon too. Like mile 20 seems to be where they die. But like on that one, I had the case. I put them in the case. Mm. It was no big deal. They charged. I moved on. Didn't bring the case with me um, for Chevron. So I had the crowd cheering me on the last six miles. And it's just... Yeah. the energy is amazing so um, it's so awesome just uh, seeing all the signs and you see the same person like I, I'm like how did how did you come yeah, over the here Taylor Swift it... sign. I saw it over and over and over and I was like this is all I needed like and the guy playing his music on the bridge like that really yeah. hyped me up um I don't know it's just the crowd is you know this year I'm doing the well <laughs> I'm signed up for the half this year um I'm kind of going back and forth honestly between switching to the half or the full, I like them both for different reasons, and I can't uh -huh. decide. I can't decide. So what are the so, different reasons you like uh, the both half and the full? Well, I like the half because the mileage is less for training, and it kind <laughs> yeah. of is over the holidays, and I'm very busy, and mm -hmm. you know, so I, I like that aspect of it, and that I have a bunch of fall half marathons, so I feel like I can kind of coast into the training season for a half yeah. versus yeah. the full. You know, when you cross the finish line of a full, you're like, I just did that. You know, the it, it's different. Yeah. I don't know. I also it's... just watched all the Chicago Marathon stuff, and it just really gave me FOMO. Inspired you. Now I kind of want to do. <laughs> now I kind of want to do the full. So anyway. Especially when you go to the the expo, like whenever you're there, you're like, like one year I was set on, like, I'm not going to run it. I'm injured. I thought I was injured. Uh, I woke up with like some pain, like most runners do the race week. You feel like you're like breaking down. And then I went to the expo and I was like, man, I could. I, I think I'm still going to do it. Yeah, I could do it. <laughs> so I actually did end up running it. And, you know, I, I, I had that FOMO deep into me that I mm -hmm. actually signed up for it because the expo is is huge. And, 
you're buying, you've seen everybody get excited for it. And you're like, man, I, I want to do that too. So well, and I, most I of the people it. in my run club are running their first marathon this year. I think that's the biggest thing. There's a lot of my friends who I run with mm -hmm. every day who are doing their first. And I'm like, I want to be there with them. I want to do that with them. I want to do all the training with them. Like, it's just kind of, um, it's just making me want to, you know, I'm like, well, I could just run, you know, 10, 12 miles. And these people are going to be doing 16, 20. I want to be out there with them. So, so well, what, what run club do you run with? Um, Lifetime Run Club in it's in mainly Clear Lake area. Lifetime okay. Baybrook Run Club. There we go. Yeah, they had a big big showing over at the uh, the Galveston 10K. You all had your yeah. own tent over there. I think the winner was actually from the the yeah, female she's winner. She's one of my best friends. She okay. helps me with a lot of my training, and she's yeah, she's amazing. So so do you, are you, is she one of the ones you go on the the girls? Uh, Mm -hmm. She with? is one of yes. She, um, her, and I, and one other girl, we're trying to do a race in all the fifty states. So oh, okay, we um, are going to Mississippi in December. So are they marathons so. in in fifty states or is any? We're just trying to do well. They're doing half marathons or marathons. The other two girls, I'm just doing a race of any capacity. So like, if we go on a family vacation, I'm going to find yeah. a five k in a different state or what? You know, I for me, I don't think setting the race as a certain distance is the intention of what I'm trying to do, which is see mm -hmm. the world, but also like enjoy and explore new places with running. So that's kind of my um, yeah. idea. And I'm like, I can sign up for a 5k anytime and run that at the very minimum without any. I training. always do that too. So, I'm always like, if I'm going on vacation, I'm like, is there a 5k happening at that same time? And yeah, we're going like, to, I went to Vegas in, um, when are we going over spring break and i signed up that's for colorado a right there. yes so i was like well while we're here i'm gonna do this half marathon <laughs> so i saw you're doing the are you doing the vegas uh, marathon I'm doing, was... yes i'm doing the vegas um i'm doing the half for that so that's november it's actually my right? goal race it's next weekend next yeah, weekend next yeah weekend. yeah it's my goal race for the year I've, I've that's one thing i've changed a lot about my running is i used to have a lot of goals now i set one or two a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I really just focus on those two things. And then I run for fun all the other times. And it's been really, I really, yeah, like I feel like your, your training that. is kind of similar to mine. Like, like do a lot of races. Well, I don't do it anymore, but back in the day when I was like super runner guy, I, I would uh, like sign up for a race every weekend. And those were like my, almost my speed training. Like right. I would, get my my that's how i get faster doing a race every weekend and just pushing yourself every weekend and, well, then and taking you don't easy. stop during a race you know yeah. i mean a lot of times you do training runs people start talking mm -hmm. to you they're like oh let's take a picture and then you end up pausing your watch and you're like oh i paused my watch for 20 minutes going to the bathroom talking to people and you know that impacts your training versus if you do a training run um in a race you're not going to stop they have fuel you don't have to worry about the water like you don't have to worry about the course. It's safe. So I'm actually doing that with the Houston half this weekend. Um, I'm running that right. as a, as a long run workout. So man, I want to go to that race. Uh, that, that medal is so cool. The, it says, uh, the, what does it say? The believe, or, uh, what's that graffiti that it, it has on there? We believe we, yeah, we smile it's a really or awesome Houston medal. And it has, I think it's a bottle opener too, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I don't it. know. It's really it's cool medals. colors. I'm excited for it. That's what's, FOMO got me to sign up for that one. All, my friends, <laughs> all of my friends are going and they're like, it'll be good training for your. I thought, for so your you're not going to the Taylor Swift concert this weekend? No, I wish I was. I, uh, I'm very I thought, jealous. I, I, of, I saw something in your story. I thought you were in a, you were going or you're trying to win no, tickets. No, right? I try, Yeah, I entered a giveaway. I was like, well, if I win it in a giveaway, I have to go. I mean, yeah. I'm going Houston. <laughs> like, it's so fine. would you skip out on the on the half marathon if you got tickets to the Taylor Swift? Absolutely, I, I definitely <laughs> would. Um, absolutely, I, I'm checking all the time on every giveaway that I've entered. Um, I would also drive there on Sunday afterwards if I had to. Like if I got Sunday night tickets, I'm, yeah. I'm my girlfriend, she's trying. We we're to think, we're going there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So she's trying to see if she could get another ticket while while we're there because we have tickets for Sunday. Uh, we just don't. Have, she don't have tickets for the other days. So it's possible. We're, I had a friend when she came to Houston. We went on. I think Saturday, and then she went back again on Sunday, and she got last minute tickets. She's like, "Come meet me," and I, I really debated. But I didn't think I had it in me. There were floor seats. We had floor seats the night before. And I was like, I wow. think I have it in me to stand for four more hours. Like, I think I'm too old for this. So I didn't <laughs> end up going back the second night. But We tried to go to the Taylor Swift concert, but the tickets just kept going up and up. They were, which is actually cheap compared lucky. to what they are now. Yeah, uh, I was but... lucky. I had a pre-sale code. I spent eight hours of my life getting those tickets. And then... I, I was really lucky with those, but Taylor Swift's <laughs> actually a, a really big runner. Like uh, you heard about her training process where she yes. does her set list. Right. And you know what I was going to say last. So you asked about my treadmill, um, my last marathon mm -hmm. cycle, my husband was out of town a lot. 
And I was having a very hard time training because I had these three hour long runs and I had no one home on the weekend and I couldn't leave my kids and I didn't know how to. So that's why I ended up finally getting the treadmill was mm -hmm. I needed the, to have the ability to run for three hours and somehow still parent. And that was really hard, but I watched so many <laughs> Taylor Swift things. Like I did the, um, she had her reputation tour on Netflix and I would watch that and I would just sing along to it and run. And I was like, this is great <laughs> for my aerobic like base here. <laughs> So, so on a scale of one to ten, how, for me. how big a Swifty are you? Uh, very much like every. I mean, if you if I pick up my phone right now, it's probably oh yeah, it's Taylor Swift. Like, you know, where's my camera? It's literally that was what was playing. Um, it's my yeah. I have like right. five favorite artists, and that's in my. It's probably one for me. So nice. I'm I'm excited to go to that that thing. I'm trying to incorporate running into the Taylor Swift or because I make videos on YouTube. So I'm like running during a Taylor Swift concert. I told my girlfriend that she's like, you're not running during the actual concert. Are you I was like, no, no, I'll be right next to you sitting, but I'll be running through new Orleans during the right. Concert. Yeah. So no, I'll, I we'll would see. love to do the, I haven't had the mileage for it because I haven't been marathon training, but I would love to do a long run with the air store on Disney streaming. Like that's one of my, <laughs> I'm going to do that someday, but my mileage is just maxing out at 10 or 12 right now. And that's not the entire era store. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's because it's three hours. So you gotta yeah. run for a long time. So you're a uh, ambassador for a lot of things. What, what are all your ambassadorships and how, how did you get into that? Is it your social media that, that got you into uh, all these, including the, the, the Chevron Houston marathon or. Yeah, I would say definitely social media. Um, on Instagram, I had a few different reels that went kind of viral as far as like weight loss and inspiring people with that. Um, mm -hmm. People wanting to and, and inspiring people with like the fact that I went from one mile to a marathon in a year. Like apparently that's yeah. not a normal way to start running. Um, from what I've been told, they're like most people don't do their first marathon in the first year they start running. Mm -hmm. But I just decided I was going to do it. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do this. It's, it's going to happen. I'm going to will myself into this. Um, but yeah, I'm an ambassador for Running Alliance Sport. I love mm -hmm. being a part of that organization. I'm an ambassador for the Vegas Marathon that I'm doing. Um, Ventures Endurance is another brand. They have probably 115 races nationwide. Um, the only one in Houston is the hot chocolate, but they have a lot. Mm. So I travel and do their races. Um, as so do you get free my, races for those? I do. So okay. any of the, wow. and for a friend. So myself and a friend. Um, so you can travel to any one of the races, the 100, all 150 of them. And, wow. I mean, I could. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So I do a lot of their events as much as I can work it into my schedule. Um, and then I also work with like different brands and things like that. But yeah, pretty much all of it's been social media and people just really being inspired by my story. So so what's the most like a uh, like being an ambassador? What, what do you get out of it? Because, I, you know, the brands get something out of it, too, for sure. But what, what do you personally get out of being an ambassador? Um, as far as like the brands, I feel, I mean, they send me things all the time. Like I don't like salt stick. I partner with them. I've never bought salt stick. They send yeah. salt stick galore. I love it. I use it every day and they send it to me. Um, so for me, it's free product that I was already using. Um, so yeah. that's, you know, um, yeah. you've had like brands send you shoes. I think we've had with Chevron and things like that. Um, so for me, I have, I think three or four different pair of shoes that were sent to me based on brand partnerships. So I think just being yeah. able to try out products that maybe I wouldn't have used um, or purchased, but it really makes it more affordable. Right, <laughs> right now, like, cause I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram. I'm getting a lot of like, sp like mail about like all these random products. Like you want to try out this random product for me and make a video. And I'm right. like, I don't know if I want to try. I mean, some of them are not even like, I'm a guy, so they're sending me like women stuff. So I'm like, right. why you're not even looking at my social media to see who, what, what kind of sex I am, you know? So right. It's, and it's I've very, been very really, hard. because my time is so like limited with all the other things in life, like I really try to filter out all of that and only work with people who I really like their yeah. product. I mean, I will try things and give feedback if someone asks, but I'm not going to partner with someone unless it's something that I'm regularly using or like for any events. I mean, I love running, whether it's for fun or for racing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always down to promote the events because the community and the racing is what I've fallen in love with the most. So, yeah. 
So running Alliance Sports, I'm going to be the race director of, uh, of some races that they used to handle for, for next Yes. year. I, and I was talking to John and Jonathan, and they, they were like, they, they want to continue the relationship. And uh, I'm excited to do that. And I was wondering, like, what is your preferred shirts that you guys get? Because I want to get input from the ambassadors, too, on on what shirts do you like? Like What for do you look race for shirts? in a shirt? Yeah, for race shirts. Do you prefer the cotton ones or the soft No. style ones, or do you want I mean, the... honestly, this one is my favorite. The Brooks ones from Houston, like I wear that one all the time. It's the material. So for me, it's material. Um, I don't wear shirts if I don't like the material. So either it has to be really comfortable dry fit or like the really soft cotton ones. Those are Uh -huh. the only like the Bella canvas or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, pretty yeah. much it for me. That's like, and I also like um, the races who have, options like when you have like the option for a tank or a long sleeve and you like pay a little extra to me i think more people will wear the shirt and like promote your race then um so you know i have a lot of friends who will pay five dollars extra for a tank top or a long sleeve so i think So, that's one of the things so what? How, are you gonna do all the races for the for that series? Are you, are you doing a uh, Laporte next? Is it the last I one? haven't decided if I'm doing Laporte or not. I probably will because I live in Laporte. Um, Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like literally like three minutes from my house. At the very least, I'll be up there and I'll volunteer and pass out medals and things. Um, I'm doing two halves in November. I don't know that I want to do a third, but I might. <laughs> Yeah, I need to start running. I I wish I could run these races. I, I need to find more races for myself to run, to train because I like to do my long runs during a Yeah. race too. Well, So. and I think if I, I'm deciding after I get back from um, Vegas, if I'm going to do the full or the half for Chevron, that's kind of my, that I, that's kind of what I've decided for myself. And I think if I'm doing the full, I'll probably end up doing Laporte because it'll be a great training Yeah. run. Yeah, you need to. Um, but So I'm doing how? the Route 66 half in Wow. um, Tulsa over Thanksgiving as well. So So how many how many uh, how many uh, states are you are you at now? I think eight, but I, Okay. I mean, I have to double check, but I think eight. I just started um, in 2022, I guess, and Yeah, I did yeah, one yeah, state yeah. there. Well, I did Chevron, and then I did um, one more. I did South Dakota, and then, but yeah, it, I think this year I've done, I don't know, 10 or 12 races. I do a lot of little, little events. Yeah, that'd be Um, fun. I need I need to start doing that because you know I I always end up doing the same races from year to year to year. But I, and I always tell myself I want to travel and do races at other cities. So maybe I'll make myself a goal. I probably Yeah, have I really like love it, like exploring new cities and we even do like shakeouts before seven. and it's just really fun. Um, I'm at, by the end of the year, I'll be at nine, so, Okay. of my states. Okay. And then next year, I think I'm doing four. I'm trying to do four to five-ish a year. Have you got into trail running yet? Have you, have you hit the trails yet? We talked about this briefly, what the one that you signed up for in The, the the 100 the miler. Rocky Raccoon, Rocky Raccoon. Yes. Okay, so... I might do a shorter version of that. I might. Okay, Um, we have family if you land can. that's in New Waverly, which is where that all is. Okay. Um, so I've considered it, but I haven't really. <laughs> I, I like. Do I it. don't like that the weekends are separated, though. Like I Yeah, wouldn't be there yeah. on the same weekend as all the big races, Yeah. and that's not how it. I think they had a half. Maybe was the shortest distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't remember. uh, the the hundred the hundreds are on the week before the Mm hmm. fifty k and half marathon and all that. So yeah, that that is that is a I mean, bummer, right? I did one trip. I mean, we do the Seabrook trails and that's, you know, kind of Mm trails, -hmm. but it's not all trails. So Yeah, that's the extent you of my trail racing. And I definitely run a little slower every year at Seabrook trails, but it's always a beautiful. So there's pros and cons of it to me. Yeah, I got into trail running and my pace went from like, you know, a 9, 10 for, for my marathon to now I'm running like a 13, 14. Is a, ultras will definitely slow you down. They'll slow you Yeah, down. that's You, you have to. There's. right. I haven't done okay, so one thing I've been eyeing is there's a vacation races has like a trail fest event. Mm hmm. Um, and they pick beautiful locations and they ship you by bus into different places. You stay in a tent and it's like three or four days of beautiful um races and they're different Oh, you're distances. running every day? Is that what it is? Yeah, but they're shorter distances. Mm I hmm. mean, I think there's like 10Ks up to like 25K or something. Okay. I'm not really sure. Um, I was browsing that and I was like, that sounds like the dream, like vacation for me. So I might try Yeah, to I've seen do some of those races something where they're like just that. like, they set up your tents, 
and then you just basically run and then sleep and eat and then you run right again and they the have like day. yoga and a bunch of um things like that for you to do so i might have to do that eventually um i'm also pacing this year like i joined beast pacing so i'm doing some of my events um as a pacer too so, so that's another which, which, thing which events are you pacing i'm on the alternate list for this event that i'm going to in mississippi i forgot what that, the mississippi gulf coast marathon we're doing that race um mm -hmm. in december and then i'm doing the weekend before chevron um wow time something time and so have you paced before it's in sugarland no I, this would be my first <laughs> main event so and what um, what uh what uh what a time are you pacing i'm doing halves and i'm doing like 230 245 three hour the or like the sweeper things like that so yeah yeah most of mine i signed up for the three hour i really like um being a part of encouraging people who a lot of them are doing their first half and yes yeah. It's really fun to be out there and just encouraging those people. So I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah, I've been a pacer before, like for the Woodlands uh, half marathon, of uh, Woodlands marathon before, and yeah, it's it's a it's a different experience because you have to push yourself to to do it, and you can't let them down. I right. did I did DNF a race during my pacing duties at the Woodlands one time because they they like ran out of water. It oh was like gosh. super hot. I started throwing up like three or four or five times. I was like, man, I, I think I might die on this race course. So you I, know, had, I, had to, I had to drop. I had and a so race I, 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 And I felt horrible because I, yeah. I, I let everybody down. So I had a race recently that I actually was vomiting on the course at mile six. And I was like, man, I don't know that I can finish this one. But <laughs> but I did. It was fine eventually once I started moving again. And I like was just like <laughs> devouring salt stick and trying to rehydrate and but I ended up, I think, getting altitude sickness. It ended up being an elevation gain of a thousand feet, and it was just, it was a rough race. So, <laughs> I think that's been really good, though, figuring out that it's okay to walk some in your races. It's okay to take little yeah. breaks. It's okay, you know. It it really doesn't impact your time that much, you know. Um, I think that's the thing that I've learned a lot of <laughs> over the past year is that in a distance race, taking a one minute walk break doesn't make or break your race. Um, yeah. A lot of people, yeah. I, I always feel that they're like, Oh man, I'm so proud. I mean, I mean running the whole time is, is awesome too. But if you do take a walk break, it's not, it's not, doesn't mean you failed, you know, it's, right. it's the, you still got to the distance and yeah. sometimes even those walk breaks will make you go faster, you know? Like, yeah, they definitely do. And that's what, during my first marathon, I definitely walked a lot like the second half, um, just on and off. And I, I had found my pace. It was like, okay, if I start getting slower than X pace, I need to take a walk break because I end up averaging a faster pace, even yeah. with 30 mm -hmm. seconds of walking because my body's so fatigued. So I just, so I tell, so tell me about your first, uh, Chevron Houston, Houston marathon. How, how did everything go for that? Did it, did it go like swimmingly well? Like you went, you were perfect race planning and everything went well? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> because it never does. <laughs> but I mean, I did PR at it. So I was happy mm -hmm. about that. Um, the first marathon I did was a downhill and then Houston is obviously not. So I think I PR'd by 14 minutes on a that's, harder that's a huge course. PR. Yeah. So I, but I was like 15 minutes behind my goal. So I was, I was annoyed. Um, I ended up getting the worst blister of my life, um, on my foot and it started hurting mile five. I was like, man, I'm in so much pain. I can barely, barely run. I don't know what's going on. Something is wrong so with my on. foot. So I was like right on target for my goal for those five miles. And then I was like, I need to slow down a little. I'm not gonna be able to get through this. So I slowed down about 20, 30 seconds. Um, just to <laughs> control my pace, but, and the pain, but I finally took off my shoe and literally I had like this raised blister that was bleeding. It was, I was like, how did I ever finish this? Like, how do we dig deep when we're in so much pain and do run another, you know, 20 yeah. miles. Um, so I feel like the first part before we split was really congested. I was having a very hard time weaving in and out. Um, yeah. Just I've been in what, C. What corral are you in? C. I'm all, I've been in C every time so far. Okay. Um, yeah. And there's just a lot of variety in pacing in C. So you have people who are walking, you have people who are running, you have people who are coming out really fast. You have people yeah. and then they're walking because they came out too fast. Like it's just such a not a lot of consistent pacing going on around mm -hmm. me, in my experience anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've sure. only ran two, but 
Um, but once we split, it was, it was good. I got into my zone. I just turned on my music and I just focused and I, I felt good for that whole part. Um, I'd say mile 17, I started eating energy chews literally every mile, just trying to find any sort of energy. I was just hitting the <laughs> wall majorly 17 to 20. I was really, really struggling. Um, and then I think at mile 20, I called one of my friends and I was like, I don't know that I can keep running. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, and she's like, it's just a, it's just a 10 K. It's just a normal, you know, basic run home. I'm like, yeah, okay. Okay. So, um, and then my headphones died right after that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, but there were actually two girls from my run club who I found at mile 21 mm. and just lined up with them. And we just ran the rest of the way through and it was like everything that I needed. And I, I'm amazed that. I was struggling. I called my friend for help. I, my headphones died. And then all of a sudden my friends show up and I'm like, not the same friend that I called. Yeah. <laughs> she was way done. She <laughs> way done. <laughs> um, but I was just like, okay, this is what I love about this. The community, like I needed yeah. support and all of a sudden here's my people. And I, you know, so it, I mean, even I, if you don't find your friends on the course, he's, I, I end up just end up talking to another person struggling and then you, you yes. form a team and you start running with them and everything seems easier once you're not in your own head thinking right. how much this is horrible. So, and I think that's what happened too at the split line, you know, I'm running with these people and I'm running with them for a long time over and over. And it's like, I'm finishing with people who I started running with at the split. Like it was really you know, you could tell who, who was running the rest of it with you by that point. So I don't know. It's really cool how the running community does like bind into, you know, um, I actually ran a 5k this summer with my six year old, his first 5k. And I didn't wear any headphones and I was just like encouraging him and hyping him up the whole time. And, um, everyone around me was like, this is so awesome. Thank you for encouraging him. Like, this is really making my race. And it was honestly one of my favorite races. I was like, I should just run here every time, like without headphones, <laughs> just hyping up people. And and that's kind of what led me to apply for pacing mm-hmm. because I was like, oh, this is so fun. I love being someone's support person. <laughs> yeah. You, you're, so. you're the positive light in the, in the race. And, 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 and I'm running at an easy pace. So I think that mm-hmm. was the thing too. Most of my races, I'm at least pushing some of it versus this was just running at an easy pace and encouraging and. So if you do run the uh, marathon or half marathon, what are your, do you have any time goals uh, for both of the races? You said the Las Vegas is already your A race. Yeah. Are these races just going to be for fun or a training run kind of? I originally planned on Houston being for fun. You know, actually your um, video, I didn't know this when I like didn't know you at the time, but the video about eating and drinking on the Chevron (laughs) course, I saw that last year and I was like, I'm going to be that guy next year. I'm going to (laughs) go eat and drink everything on this course. I'm going to run party pace. Like I just want to enjoy it. Cause I'm usually it's my goal race. And I was like this year, Mm. I'm not doing it as my goal race. I'm coasting into it. I'm not going to like stress out about training over the holidays and I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to drink and eat everything. I Usually I'm like barely drinking water, you know, and trying oh, yeah, to yeah, like yeah. stuff down fuel <laughs> so I can't breathe. And I'm just, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really excited to um, just go. Yeah, somebody stopped me uh, at, at, at the Galveston, the Thomas 10K. And they were like, uh, you're the eating eating guy. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, in the Houston Marathon. I was like, oh, yeah. That's, a, so that, that's funny. Yeah, no, that, that's that video went viral. That's my entire vibe for this year. I was like, I'm creating two races that are my goals. And other than that, I'm going for fun. I'm going party pace. Like, I'm running the Route 66 half with a friend. Like, I'm not, I'm just having fun. <laughs> So, so I think that's you're been cool finding the joy in running races without racing and all the pressure. Hundred so. percent. It's a it's a different experience when you're you're out there just just uh, interacting with a crowd, high fiving, eating all the food, and yes. just having fun. Because uh, there, there's times when you you want to go fast, but you know other times it's just an event to enjoy. And and, right. and that's what I did the last couple of years. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so you are like me. You're kind of like uh, not in in Houston. Uh, we're like, there's a few ambassadors that's well, I think one's in Mexico, somebody's in right. New Mexico, somebody's in Colorado. Uh, so, uh, how, how, how has your first uh, half of this Houston Marathon ambassador ship been? I think it's been good. I have a son who plays football and we have games every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. So, like, a lot of the 
events that are happening, I just can't make. Um, but yeah. you know what? Our last game is on Saturday. So November, December, you'll see me out there in all the events. Um, I think sometimes it's challenging when you live in the suburbs to go to all the different events that are in the city. But I yeah. also think once you get there, they're really fun. So yeah, I that's true. I'm trying to encourage and like encourage friends to carpool with me and things like that. Um, so I think if you have, at least for me, like a lot of our run club also likes to go to these types of events. So I just try to get a whole group together. We all go together. We share parking and you know, all of that. So it's been good. I love the community. I have so many new friends. I mean, there's people who I talk to every day now that I didn't even know before all of this. So yeah. And, and really yeah, cool. now we for sure always have a friend at any race. Like I, you know, I saw you at the Galveston Thomas K. I was like, yeah, hey, Liz. So yeah. it's, it's, well, it's, yeah, Rosa's the one, it's really Rosa's fault that I'm doing the Houston half. It's she convinced <laughs> me to do it. So. so I also saw you, I saw you sign up for the, you put your name in for the Chicago lottery, right? I did. I did last year too. Didn't get selected. Um, I also put my name in for Berlin. So. Oh wow! So, are you trying to get the six stars too? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, eventually, (laughs) it's not my main goal. Like, I want to do all the states. I mean, I have friends who are going to these races. I think if I have people who are going and I can kind of Mm -hmm. share some of the costs of things, like I'm, I'm going to go with them. Um, That's true. I think that. I think every race can be magical. I think a lot of people put a lot of focus on the six stars or doing that, but I don't know. I mean, my first marathon was this little like 200 people race and it was magical too. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. My last race I did was a half that was overly crowded. And that's what I keep hearing about these big races is that everything's crowded. So for me, if I go, it will be for experience, not for racing. Um, I don't. That's true want to be racing in huge crowded places because nothing makes me more mad than leaving all throughout yeah. and just being exhausted by mile five like and trying to get your, your your time and you're just like get out why are there so many people over here walking and you're trying to run so i, yes. I get that too i get that too i, so imagine, least, like, I, I do want to do run, new york i want to do new york yeah okay, i, t- I, I, I talked to with Callie the other day yeah. and i was like man i already have been told by so many people that it's magical but I really want to do that one. Yeah, when I've she started talking, it really gave me goosebumps. Gave me goosebumps okay, as she was talking read, about it. Before I even ran my first half, I entered uh-huh. the NYC marathon. That November, after I did my first 5K, I entered the lottery for oh, that, yeah, that that's year. coming up. That's I like, was like, I was like, well, if I have to do a first marathon, it might as well be NYC. <laughs> <laughs> I had decided I was never doing the marathon, by the way. So <laughs> here we look are. At you, look at you now. So you are a swimmer too, and you are a cyclist. Do you have a triathlon that you're ever going to want to do? You know, I said I was going to do that eventually, but one, I don't have the time. That's even more training. It I don't is have even time more for training. that. So that's going to have to be maybe when I'm in my 40s, when my kids are older. Like, I think maybe, you know, I've seen that a lot, that a lot of people when they're 45, 50, they seem to switch to that triathlon arena. And I, I could see it now from a time perspective. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I don't have time to add swimming and cycling into the mix. Also, bikes are expensive. Oh, I, um, 100%. <laughs> I thought about signing up for the Sylvan Beach Triathlon. Mm-hmm. In La- I did that one, um, a sprint. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might do that someday. My mom and I have talked about doing it together. Um, or doing it with, like, my daughter and doing, like, a multi-generational look at us women do this thing kind of thing. <laughs> um, but we just haven't found a date that worked for us, so... I, I might do one of those shorter. The, the, the swimming ones. part, you're not even scared of that, right? Since that, no, that I'm like, thing. I can pick that up tomorrow again. I mean, I've done it some, like when we, when I would work out in the gym, I would swim laps. I was like, oh, it's just like riding a bike, which, you know, I do a lot of indoor cycling. I don't do a lot of outdoor cycling. Um, so I feel like I'd have to, I don't know how I would really train for it because I have to have a bike and I don't know how you even I don't know. Yeah, bikes. So. The only thing about like the triathlons, the the swim scares me for sure, but biking scares me too, just because you know so many of my friends have got, been in accidents with with cars. I'm like, right. I don't think I could even train around here because that they're gonna kill me out here in Beaumont. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's an area where where I live. There's people who cycle. It's like a, a long cycle route that so mm-hmm. many people do. Like Sunday morning, I'm driving to church, and there's all these cyclists out there doing their long ride, and it's just it's like 
just a straight road that goes all the way to the same Cinema Monument and they're just riding that whole loop. So I'm sure I could join that group, but. <laughs> so you're still cross training. You're still, you still all the cross training that you do and you're still doing the, the weightlifting too. I'm trying to, it's been a struggle. I think um, the first year that I started running, I was like this, I'm not giving up any of my lifting days. I refuse to do that. Like it's going to be lifting, then running, then cycling in my priority list. Um, I will say this summer, I feel like my schedule was really crazy and I just, it kind of was a little bit of the back burner, um, but I can always tell when I'm not lifting. So yeah, I, I yeah. try really hard. I've been working on trying to find like what a good routine is where I'm somehow running five days a week and lifting two or three days a week. Um, yeah. But it's like just hard. Wait, just once you get all those body. miles in. When, it's hard to get a lifting session in because you have to run so much. So it's like right. I already so worked I out for, for me, an hour. I have to like get up early in the morning and do my mm -hmm. miles. And then like around my lunch break, I go out and I do my lifting. That's kind of how my day has to look if I want to do both. Um, but, you know, sometimes getting up early does not happen today. <laughs> three days in a row, I've used my alarm. So especially when it's cold like this, you know, it, it feels so good in the bed. You're like, I don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I literally set my alarm for five, literally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I have yet to make it out of my bed at five. So. All right. So what's next for you? Like well, besides the, all the running, what, what's up next for, for you? Like you're, you're going to do Las Vegas. Is it right? That, that's, yes, that's the I'm doing closest thing. Vegas. What's your goal for that? I think sub two hours and a half. I don't know that I can hit it. I don't know. I, you know, it's funny. I actually was debating on kind of redoing my goal. I was like, do I want to go for 210 instead? Um, I've been really doing a lot of hilly races lately. So a lot of my races are not supporting that time. But then I'm like, this is a downhill race. It's mm -hmm. not, a, not only is it not uphill and I'm not a strong hill runner. Like I'm, that's my, that's my focus to answer your question. I'm going to work on doing more hills and more threshold work. <laughs> to become a stronger, um, like I'm really good at hitting my faster paces for 5k, 10k, but I cannot seem to carry it into the longer distances. So that's so my is, goal is, for- Is Las Vegas 25. net downhill? It is, it's a, yes, so it's a- So that is a- supposed to be fast, so, and I'm a very strong downhill runner, so I'm It's just hoping, so dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm able, I mean, so it's kind of sub two for my A goals, 210 is my, B goal, and then I think just a PR, which is like I think two thirteen is my C. So awesome. We'll see. My PR right, got... was at Laporte last year, so nice. And that's a hill. <laughs> that's a hill run. That's it that's is. a huge hill. It is a huge <laughs> hill. So I'm like, surely I can shave some of this off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got one last thing. It's called uh, this or that. I think you've, if you watch Haley's, yes. you know this one. So I'm gonna go. Uh, first one is half marathon or the marathon. Which one did you, you choose? I think from a, man, I don't know. I still <laughs> kind of feel the same. Like I like the half from the training aspect, but I love the feeling yeah. of accomplishment from the full. So yeah. I'm trying that. to limit myself to one marathon a year because it's just a lot of training. So, a lot, so much training. Yeah. Um, the it. mental aspect of it too. It's not just physical training. It's the mental of the, like you have a rigid training that you have to follow. Like you were talking about the other day that, you know, it's been hard to consistently show up for your training run. So yeah. I don't know. So okay, uh, burger or pizza? That's an easy one. Burger. Definitely. Okay. What's a good burger over there in, in Laporte? Uh, what is that? Oh, there's now I'm Burger Libre. That's the name of it. It's owned burger by Libre. um the people who own right Gritos. Burger so, Libre. All it's right. It's delicious. Um, I also like, it's not local, but Hop Dotty, like they're, they have truffle fries. And truffle fries. Know, that's what I got last year after the marathon. I came home and I was just miserable. No one was at home. Oh my, <laughs> everyone was gone. And I door dashed Hop Dotty to my house and just devoured some truffle fries and a burger. So that's my go to after race thing is a, is a burger. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I love a good burger. Pizza is okay, but I mean, that, that, that I, like I wouldn't mind pizza, pizza either. Yeah, but burger's good. I mean, I had a whole pizza yesterday, so I'm not <laughs> against the pizza. <laughs> All right, this one I pretty much know the answer, but we'll go ahead and see. Maybe, maybe you change. Uh, Garmin or Koros? I have a Garmin. I'm actually an ambassador for Garmin, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. League of Garmin. <laughs> uh, well, what does that even mean? I saw you have like a captain for the League of Garmin. Yes, yeah, so we just host like 
we have swag that we give away from Garmin. We host like quarterly events. And I mean, I actually do things with my run club where we'll meet um, outside of like a running event and kind of work on how you use your Garmin for training, like programming mm. workouts. No one seems to know how to do that. No, so yeah. I work with people. <laughs> They're always like, I don't know how I keep up with my intervals. I'm like, well, do you program them? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's learn how to do that. So a lot of it is just helping people when they ask questions about Garmin. Um, so do you get like free Garmin's or anything? Do they give you uh, any This watches? year they actually did give us. So I have this fancy little touchscreen Epic Pro one that they, oh, wow. you were able they gave to you a earn. really nice one. <laughs> yeah. I had a Phoenix before that. Now my husband has a Phoenix. Um, my kids even have Garmin watches. So we, we have a lot of Garmin in this family. Yeah, I like Garmin. <laughs> Garmin is like uh, the, 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 the smart watch of watches. Like uh, of of those like i mean there's the apple one too but right uh, i like i like garmin I was an it has apple everything. watch person for a long time and and i'm really into technology so there are things that do integrate like i have a macbook for work i have a MacBook yeah. for personal use i have an ipad i have iphones like i have apple everything so the integration is the only i would say con of garmin but it's still it's pretty good you just can't respond to all your text messages but yeah you know. that's true all right, next one is running or weightlifting. You know, I like them both for different reasons. Like yesterday I went and did a really heavy leg session and I was like, man, I can, or I guess Monday, I can take on the world. I can do anything. So I think from a <laughs> mental perspective, I actually really love lifting because yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm awesome. I can do anything. I like it. Just I, really I agree with you. Me. I could agree with that. Yeah. Um, but running like yesterday, I was like, well, I could either go deal with everyone fighting or I can go run. So I think it helps me like blow off steam. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, I don't know. I don't really yeah, know I that I have an yeah. answer. After, after you lift, you like, you feel like you're like so strong. You can like yeah. beat up anybody or, you know, you can take, you can lift a car off of somebody. Yeah, uh, so absolutely. Bit, so yeah, from different. that perspective, and, and I even talked to one of my friends and I'm like, man, I forgot how much I need this every day. Like when I lift, I'm just like, I can do anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the, the last one is a simple one, not, not running related. It's a Costco or Sam's. I have a membership to both, but I order from Costco like every other week. Um, oh, but so do you pick it up? I get do it? a lot of Instacart. <laughs> That's right. These Costco I like, but Sam's and their uh, Scan and Go, it's like so good. Oh, yeah. I've so good. done a few so things good. from there. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think we just like more of the things from Costco, like mm. the brands that we use. Um, they seem like they have the cases of Alani, and I that gets yeah, every that's time. you love those. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, like addicted. <laughs> I know. I have a caffeine, as you see, where I'm sipping my coffee during the call. I have a caffeine problem, but that's okay. Uh, all right, Liz. How can people find you if they want to contact you? What's your Instagram? What's what's all your socials? Okay, my Instagram is at Lizzing That Mom Life, um, and I don't really have much else that I use. I have, I think, I have a TikTok with the same name, but I don't really do much TikToking. So <laughs> I would say Instagram. Okay, so I, me too. I'm like, I'll Instagram. I'll do TikTok, but I don't know how to how to get any anything. Yeah, I post the Nobody same watches. things I post on Instagram on TikTok, but it's not <laughs> something that I. Focus make a on. lot of effort with. <laughs> it's just not my community. Instagram, I love it so. Well, all right. Thanks for being on the podcast, Liz. I, I appreciate it, you. And uh, have a great day. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks so much for having me. It's always fun to have another Houston Marathon ambassador on the show. And Elizabeth was great. Make sure to follow her on Instagram. She has some nice posts over there. And don't forget, every Monday, there's a new episode of the Go Career Talks podcast on Spotify and here on YouTube. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all those things. I'd appreciate it a lot. See you guys in the next one. Peace.